Hey everyone, it's Chuck back again with another refrigerant checkup. This is going to be one in a series of videos I'm going to do around getting ready for A12 refrigerants. And today I want to focus on the cylinder uh, containing some of our A2L refrigerants, particularly uh, Option XL41 or R54B. Uh, a while back I did one on general refrigerant cylinder safety. I would encourage you to check that one out if you haven't seen it already. We'll put a link to it uh, down below. But uh, for general safety and handling, you can check that out. But I want to focus today on our cylinders. You're going to see our new XL41. That is the, going to be the replacement for 410A in most uh, residential, light commercial air conditioning systems, as well as chillers. And uh, so the jug we have here is uh, it's one of the disposable jugs. I'd also point out on this jug has a 20 pound charge of refrigerant in it. And, and that's based, determined on the liquid density and how much can safely be put into a jug. Some are 25, some are 30, this one happens to be 20. So you might want to note that as well. So differentiating the A2Ls uh, from A1 refrigerants is important. And again, we're going away from colors. Uh, you can see that here, but the first thing you want to notice is this bright red stripe. Uh, there may be other designs that have more red on the whole top of it. But again, that red stripe and then some of the red uh, internals of systems you're going to see, service valves, piping, that kind of stuff, should all give you an alert that you're dealing with a flammable refrigerant. An A2L, mildly flammable in this case, but in an event, uh, just to make sure you know what you're working with out there. Um, another safeguard is the refrigerants are going to have a left-handed thread on the valve coming out of the res uh, refrigerant cylinder. So you're going to need an adapter. Again, that's another pause moment. So it will give uh, users a chance to uh, understand, yep, I need the adapter. This is an A2L. I need to make sure that it's going into a system designed for A2L. Again, to help prevent any mix-ups and to help keep everybody safe out there in the field. Um, another feature I, I show here has been on all of our refrigerants, but again, the safety shrink wrap, uh, that's helpful to uh, make sure that you're getting authentic, uh, good quality Camors Option refrigerants. And again, along with our other brand protection things uh, to help you avoid illegal counterfeit material. If you're ever in doubt of a th authenticity of a jug, uh, certainly give our customer service uh, line a call. We'll be able to help you out with that. You can also see on this refrigerant drug the pressure relief device. Uh, in the past, it was a, a rupture disc, which would mean, you know, if the cylinder wasn't uh, handled appropriately, it overheated and, got, and the pressure started to build up, the rupture disc would release and you would re uh, release the entire charge of refrigerant out of the jug. Uh, in this case, this is a resettable um, pressure relief device. So essentially, if the pressure would start to build up, the device would relieve and then reseed. It would relieve just enough to lower the pressure to a safe level and then it would uh, stop so you didn't lose the entire charge. It would be more like a burp rather than a, a total loss of charge from the cylinder. But again, we want to follow those safety guidelines, make sure we're storing those under proper ambient conditions, especially in service vehicles. I'm going to be doing some follow-up videos on uh, tools and trucks, what's going to go inside your vans, how's that going to be different, what tools that you use uh, with A2Ls. But uh, sticking with the cylinders today, in case you're in a job or an operation requires you to store uh, you know, more than a couple cylinders of an A2L, there are rules according to codes and standards on how you can do that. So I will refer you to a couple references here. This is some material put together by the National Fire Protection Agency, uh, NFPA, the IFC and uh, the International Code Council has a lot of uh, good information and the AHRI Safe Transition Task Force as well has put some infographics together. So it basically depends on uh, how much gas you need to store and, what, and the maximum allowable quantity or MAQ and that's going to uh, depend on the type of uh, storage you're doing. Is it shelves? Is it racks? Is it solid piles? Uh, the type of occupancy of the building, is it a factory, is it uh, um, a mercantile operation where people are coming in and, and doing commerce, or is it a warehouse, and, and, and whether it uh, has sprinklers or not, and how many fire compartments are there or control zones are in that facility. So 
it's not as complicated as it seems. It's pretty easy to kind of figure out where you fall into all this. And again, we'll put the references down there uh, to help you guide you through that. But uh, I hope this information on the A2L cylinders is helpful. Like I said, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be talking about tools, trucks, installation, best practices, everything you need to know to safely uh, transition to this new generation of refrigerants that we're starting to see out in the industry already. And again, if you haven't checked out the, the general cylinder safety uh, video, please, uh, please do that. As always, thanks so much for your business. Thanks for all the feedback. Uh, I look forward to, to hearing your questions or topics you want us to cover. And again, stay safe out there. Have a great day. And thanks for checking us out. So long. Thank you.